Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to the class of corporate finance dear students today we will discuss the features of common common stocks dear students recall from the previous lectures we started in lecture 7 the concept of long term securities valuation In lecture seven, we studied the valuation of bonds. In lecture eight, we studied the common features of bonds. In lecture nine, we studied the valuation of common stock and preferred stock. Recall from the lecture nine that we studied how to value the preferred stocks as well as how to value the common stocks we studied three different types of growth in the valuation model that were that were, that were the zero growth model there was no growth some stocks there was constant growth and we also studied the growth phase mod phases model today we will discuss on the proceeding of the previous lectures the common features of common stocks dear students remember one thing in your minds that from lecture 7 to lecture 10 all the concepts which we are discussing are the fund raiser ways the ways by which organizations raise funds for their future projects in lecture 7 we studied the bonds bonds are also the way to raise funds for the organization when organizations face with the need of money so they issue bonds in the market and fulfill that need of money we also studied the different types of bonds all types of corporate bonds are the ways to raise funds for the organization with the proceeding of bonds there are also ways to raise funds by the issuing of common stocks and preferred stocks common stocks and preferred stocks are also ways to raise funds for the organization in lecture 9 we studied that preferred stocks are mostly same like the bonds preferred stocks are also offer a fixed dividend to the investors but common stocks are a little bit different with the preferred stocks common stocks do not offer fixed type of dividend to the investors in common stocks the dividend is calculated on the base of earnings of the organization income of the organization so as earnings or incomes of the organizations goes high so the dividend also goes high with the income of the organization if the income of the organization decreases so dividend of the common stock also dividend sorry decreases so the dividend for the common stock is not fixed for the investors but in preferred stocks the dividend is fixed before the offering of the before the purchasing of the preferred stocks by the investors so the preferred stocks also same like the bonds bonds also offer fixed income to the investors preferred stocks also offer the fixed income to the investors but common stocks do not offer fixed income to the investors income of the investor is calculated on the base of income which is generated by the organization overall 
another thing which is you are supposed to keep in mind that all these long term financial instruments have ranks on the base of their income on on the base of their claim of the liquidation so what is this rank the first position of the investor in of in a organization is bond the bond holder is a person who has first position in the claim of the organization when organization distributes income to the long term securities so first of all organization distribute the income of bond then distribute the in uh, sorry uh, the debentures then subordinated debentures their types of the bonds after all the bond bonds holders get their income from the organization then organization distribute the income for the preferred stock after the distribution of the income to the preferred stocks in the last the income is distributed to the common stock holder so same case is with the organization's liquidation when organization defaults organization is liquidating so at that case the bond holder again has the first position all the types of bonds holder for example mortgage bond debentures debentures uh, subordinated debentures these types of bonds holders are on the first position then after that the preferred stock and then the common stock so this is very important to know that the position of bond holder in the time of in the case of profit distribution and in the case of liquidation of the organization the bond holders position is first position then preferred stock and then common stock so in the last the common stock gets profit as well as it has claim on the assets in the time of liquidation in the last so these two points are very important for you guys to keep in mind so let me start with the today's lecture lectures objectives that what are learning objectives for today's lecture we will discuss we will explain the investment appeal of common stocks and why dividend likes to invest in them sorry individuals like to invest in them also we discuss in today's lecture that historical stock returns and how current returns measure up to historical standards of the performance third objective of today's lecture is discuss the basis features of common stocks that what are the characteristics of the common stocks including issue characteristics the fourth objective of today's lecture is understand the different kinds of common stock values then we will discuss common stock dividends types of dividends and dividend reinvestment plans and then at the last we will discuss the various types of the common stocks so dear students today's lecture is a little bit lengthy lengthy but it's very useful about the common stocks if you study thoroughly all these slides you will be able to know all term terminologies or terms regarding common stocks so the first the appeal of the common stocks so let me discuss the appeal of the common stocks so first we should know the residual owners who are the residual owners residual owners are the stockholders common stockholders the common stockholders are called residual owners final owners a firm's owners who are entitled to dividend income they are provided by the income by the name of dividend and a protrage sorry protrated share of the firm's earnings only after all the firm's other obligations have been met before i told you all the obligations 
are met by the organization then the residual owner gets profit or gets income from the organization so stocks allows investor to tailor investment to meet individual needs and preferences the residual owner get in investment for the purpose of their own needs for the purpose purpose of fulfilling their own needs and preferences in the society stock may provide a steady stream of current income steady stream means every year every month the stockholder will get income from the organization so it's called steady stream of current income through dividend so this income is called dividend stock may increase in value over time through capital gain if organization increases its uh, income and they will reinvest this income into the current stockholders so it is called capital gain it means that dividend is not pay out to the investors and this dividend is reinvested in the organization and this reinvestment will call the capital gains so there are th two cash flows one cash flow for is the dividend and the second cash flow is capital gain capital gain is also called that the prices of the stocks if the prices of stocks goes up so it is also capital gain for example i am as a investor purchase a stock by 1000 dollar after 2 or 3 months the prices goes up from 1000 to the 1300 dollars so i purchased by the 1000 dollars but now its market price is 1300 so it means that i have capital gain of 300 dollars so these are the cash flows for the stockholders in a market what is a bear market it's very famous in the stock market in equity market in the market the bear market is very famous for the investors so what is bear market there are three types of declines the first is routine decline it means that if there is a drop of 5% or more in one of the major market indexes or major market prices like the dow jones industrial average so it's a very high level market where investor mostly investors try to get these types of stocks the stocks of dow jones industrial average so when there is decline 5% or more than 5% in Dow Jones Industrial Average so it is a routine decline it's called routine decline it will be fixed automatically it will be fixed this decline will be fixed automatically second type of decline is correction decline a drop of 10% or more in one of the major market indexes it means that there is 10% decline in the Dow Jones Industrial Average so this type of decline will be corrected by the organization organization or it for example dew jones or dew jones industrial average will try to correct this type of decline third decline is a drop of 20% or more than 20% in a major market it means that if there is decline of 20% or more than 20% in the dew jones industrial average so it is called bear market so all of the investors of the dew jones or of the stockholders of the dew jones industrial average will bear this type of decline therefore the market is called bear market any market where the prices will drop by 20% so this type of market is called bear market the name denotes that all investors will bear this type of decline so it's a loss so this loss is bear by all investors so therefore the market is called bear market so it is a very important term in the equity market next we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this common stocks that how, why people why investors purchase the common stocks there are some advantages the first advantage is opportunity for the higher return than other investments 
if you invest in the preferred stock if you invest in uh, in bonds and debentures in mortgage bonds in subordinated bonds or other types of bonds so the common stocks holders will be provided a higher return than the all other these stocks if we look over past 50 50 years stocks average 10% and high grade corporate bonds average 6% so as if we compare the st common stocks with the corporate bonds so from the past 50 years there is average 10% return in the common stocks and there is 6% return in the corporate bonds so you can see there is 4% extra income in the common stocks another advantage of the common stock is hedging of the inflation if there is a high inflation in a market so this inflation is hedged by the common stocks because it's dependent on the income of the organization so as inflation goes the income of the organization also increases because the value of the money decreases so if a organization annually income is $1000 and there is 10% inflation so an next year the organization will earn 1100 dollars because of the inflation so as income increases so dividend also increases so the only the common stock is a stock where dividend is dependent on the income of the organization so if the inflation is in adjusted so this is another advantage of the common stock next advantage of the common stock is easy to buy and sell stocks in a open market what are the open markets stock exchange market and over the counter market both are open market for the public everyone can purchase easily and sell easily their stocks in the open market when the stock exchange market or in the over the counter market so this advantage is related to the stocks prices and market information is easy to find in financial media there are plenty of financial medias who only on air the the market equity markets information to the investors so you can easily find out the markets information information regarding the equity market from the financial media so there are no financial medias which provide information regarding the bonds the regarding the ventures regarding the preferred stocks but there are plenty of financial medias who on air the all of the information regarding the equity market to the investors so this is also advantage for the common stock holders and unit cost per share of the stock is low enough to encourage ownership so the unit cost of the common stock is very low this low unit cost will encourage other investors to purchase extra or to purchase the common stocks in the equity market so this is another advantage of the common stock next the disadvantages there are disadvantages also related to the common stocks so these disadvantages are stocks subject to many different kinds of risks sorry risks first the business risk business risk means if businesses fail so dividends will not be provided to the investors financial risk if there is a financial risk in the financial management department of the organization so this also will increase the risk for the common stockholders purchasing power risk if there is no purchasing power with the investors so this will not allow to purchase the common stocks of the organizations market risk if there is a rumor in the market so this rumor will bring a huge risk to the common stockholders and event risk event risk if there is a extra event and this event will always negatively affect the market for example nowadays you can see the event that corona corona affected covid 19 affected the oil market of the uae so this is an event so this will negatively adversely affect the market of the common stock holders these are all the disadvantages of the common stock holders and how to predict which stock will go up in value it's also disadvantage how you can find out that which stock will go up and will which stock will go down due to wide swings in profit and general stock market performance and next disadvantage is low current income compared to other investment alternatives 
so these are also the disadvantages which are related to the common stock holders basic characteristics of common stocks are features of common stocks so these are all the characteristics are features of the common stocks equity capital evidence of ownership position in a firm when you purchase a common stock in an organization so this is evidence that you are owner of that organization on the basis of your stocks so your equity is stocked in that organization in the form of shares of common stocks so this is why stocks are sometimes called equities so it's equity market before i told you it is an equity market in equity market you purchase common stocks so therefore it is called equity market they are equities they are also called equities the common stocks are also called equities so publicly traded issues shares of common stocks that are readily available to the general market and are bought and sold in the open market so it's also characteristics of the common stocks before i told you in open market all the common stocks are offered to the public you can easily purchase you can easily sell your stocks in the over the counter market or in the stock exchange market so it's also characteristic or feature of the common stock public offerings on offering to sell to the to the investment investing public a set of shares a number of shares firm stock at a specified price so it's also a characteristic that organ many of the organizations most of the organizations offer a set of shares to the public in a pre specified price so this is also a characteristic of the common stock holder next rights offering on offering of a new issue of stocks to existing stakeholders stockholders sorry so this stockholder already possess the ownership in the organization but its ownership increases by offering extra stocks to these stockholders who may purchase new shares in proportion to their current ownership so their ownership will increase so it's called rights ownership oh, sorry rights offering stock spin off it's a concept where conversion of one firm's subsidiaries to a stand alone company if there is subsidiary of a man or head of his company so this company is spin off spin off means that it's standing alone company it's separated from the head of his and its stocks will be issued to the existing shareholders of the parent company the subsidiary is separated from the parent company and the stocks of the separated company will offer to the existing owners of the organization so this is called stock spin off next stock split most of the organizations divide their stocks into the two part or four parts for example if i am an investor in or ownership owner of the common stock of the nokia organization nokia corporation so nokia corporation will split out will divide my the my, my uh, common stock into two parts so i will be owner of two stocks before i was owner of one stock now i am owner of two stock the same stock is divided into two parts this is called stock split when a company increases the number of shares so outstanding by exchanging a specified number of new shares stock for each outstanding shares so usually done to lower the stock price what's the purpose of splitting the current or outstanding stocks the purpose is to lower the prices of the common stocks so when the common stocks price lower so it will be more attractive to the investors so it's a strategy to increase the common stock holders of the organization stock holders eat up with the more shares of stock that sells for a lower price because it can the investor can purchase more shares of the organization by lower price investors with 200 shares in a two for one stock split would have 400 shares after this stock splits i told you one two for one one is divided into two so the ownership of 100 stocks will have 400 shares after this stock split 
If the stock price was $100 before the split, the price would be near to $50 because it is split into two, four, two, four, two parts. It's divided into two parts. So it's also six of common stock. Next is the treasury stock. Shares of stock that were originally sold by a company and have been repurchased by the company. In an open market, share purchases are called call or buyback. Organization itself purchases its outstanding shares in an open market. So it's called treasury stock or buyback stocks. Reduces the number of shares outstanding to the public. When organization want to reduce its common stockholders, common st outstanding common stocks, so it, it will itself purchases the common stocks in an open market. Companies buy back when they believe stock is undervalued and good buy. When they know that the prices of the common stock or market value of the common stock is decreased. It means that they offered these stocks by $1,000. Now the price of the common stock is $800. So they know that the or common stock's value is under the market value, under the face value. So there is $200 profit of the per common stock. So they will purchase the common stocks in the open market. Companies may try to raise under value stock price or pop prop up up overvalued stock prices so when they purchases so there becomes the supply and demand concept when the uh, there are investors more investors and there are less stocks so the prices will be prop up may be used for mergers most of the organizations use these kinds of the uh, stocks or treasury stocks or buyback stocks for the purpose of mergers for the purpose of acquisitions and imply stock options plan Next cluster, uh, next is the topic of transaction costs. So there are two types of transaction costs. One is round lot and second is odd lot. In round lot, buying 100 shares of stock or multiple of 100 shares. So it will decrease the, pro, co, the cost, transaction cost. But second is the odd lot, buying less than 100 shares of stock well, buying whole lots or small number of shares can result in higher cost to buy and sell shares. So when you are purchasing more than 100 shares of a common stock of a company, so you are in round lot, so the transaction cost will be decreased. If you purchase less than 100 shares of common stock of a company, so in that time, in this case, your transaction cost will be higher. Frequently trading can increase transaction costs substantially. If an investor frequently trade the stocks, buy and purchase frequently, so the transaction cost will be increased. Common stock values. We studied before. There are three values, par value, book value and market value. Par value is the face value of the common stock, mainly an accounting term and not very useful to investors. It's an accounting term. Face value is an accounting term. For example, $1,000 is the face value of the common stock. So this is for the accounting purpose. In the market, may be possible the price of the common stock will 800 and 1200 and 1100. So par value is only for the purpose of accounting concept. Book value is the amount of stockholders equity, the difference between the company's assets minus the company's liabilities and preferred stocks. So this is called book value. It's the book value of the common stocks shares of common stocks and third is the market value current price of the stock in the stock market current present price of the market of the common stocks in the market so this is called market value we studied before in the last lecture market capitalization in common stock value the overall current value of the company in the stock market is market capitalization for example, total number of shares outstanding multiplied by the market value per share. If the market value of per share is $1,000 and there are 1,000 outstanding stocks, so 1,000 multiplied by 1,000, it will become 10 lakhs. So this 10 lakh is the market capitalization for the organization. Investment value, the amount that investor believe the stock should be trading for. So it's intrinsic value, which we calculated in the last lecture, in the lecture 9. So it's an intrinsic value. It's a value 
where stockholder believe that the or the stock must have the value in the market or what they think it's worth what's the worth of the common stock share of common stock probably the most important my of a stockholder when stockholder want to purchase stock of the organization so he will calculate the intrinsic value of that common stock so it is very important for the purchase of the common stock or to not purchase of the common stock next dividend it's also related topic with the common stocks before i told you that cash flow for the common stock is dividend and capital gain so now what is dividend dividend income is one of the two basic sources of return to investors so it's a income resource if you purchase if i purchase the common stock shares of the nokia corporation so they div provide dividend to me every year so this dividend is income for my investment so dividend income is more predictable than capital gain capital gain we cannot predict the capital gain that either we are capital gain is increasing or decreasing but dividend is more predictable by dividend we can know that the organization's performance is going high if the dividend is growing so we can know we easily can know we can easily know that there is a growth in the common stock price dividends tend to increase over time as companies earnings grow before i told you the dividends are dependent on the income of the organization if income of the organization grow so dividend also will grow they are going parallel if the income of the organization decreases so the dividend also decreases but average annual increase around is 3 to 5% most of the organization organizations earning will grow by 3% or 5% annually dividends represent the return of part of the profit of the company to the owner simple the stockholders next key date for the dividend every 3rd of june the declaration uh, declaration date is every 3rd june for the dividends dividend is declared on the 3rd of june and the recorded on the 18th of the june and the ex dividend rate is 16 but new dividend rate is recorded on 18 of the june june and uh, on 30 of june the dividend is paid to the investors to the common stockholders so these are the dates which are mostly famous in the world mostly in the us these four days are very famous on the 3rd of june the dividend is declared on the 18th of june the dividends the dividend is recorded on the 30th of june the dividend is paid to the investors clear next dividend and earning per share what is dividend and what is earning per share earning per share the amount of annual earnings available to common stockholders annual earnings this, this is called earning per share stated on per share basis that how many income how much income is distributed to the one stockholder it's based on the per stock per share of the common stock so it's called earning per share earning earnings are important to stock price these earnings why important because if earnings increases so this will also affect positively this equity market and the prices of that organization price prices of the shares of that organization will also increase therefore we can say that earnings are most important for the stock price earnings help determine dividend payout these earnings determine if there is no earning that how you can find out that how we have dividend pay to the to the investors if there is no earning so earnings show that determine that dividend payout ratio so what are earnings per share eps is net profit after taxes so it means that first we pay taxes in the income statement then we pay preferred dividends to the preferred shareholders and then we divide the remaining income on the number of shares common stock outstanding so this is formula for the calculation of earnings per share next is the dividend yield what is dividend yield a measure to relate dividend to share price on a percentage basis if the percentage on the base of percentage the earnings are going up so it's called dividend yield indicates the rate of current income earned on the investment dollar how many dollars invested by you and how many dollars you are getting from the invested dollars 
कन्वीनियंट मेथड टू कंपेयर इनकम रिटर्न ऑन द अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट अल्टरनेटिव इट्स अ कन्वीनियंट मेथड by which you can easily find out that i have invested in the more best form of the investment criteria so dividend yield is equal to annual dividend received per share divided by current market price of the common stock so dividend is divided by the current market price of the common stock so this is called dividend yield next is dividend pay out ratio most of the organizations do not pay dividend to the investors and this dividend is reinvested in the organization the most of the organization pay 50% of the dividend to the investors and 50% dividend is reinvested in the organization as a capital gain and most of the organization pay 100% dividends to the investors and there is no remaining concept to invest or reinvest in the organization for the purpose of capital gain so it's called dividend payout ratio the portion of earnings per share or eps that the firm pays out as dividend companies are not required to pay dividends before because sorry because companies reinvest this and it's also a way of raising funds because if there is 1 lakh dollars of dividend to pay out to the investors so you will not pay this 1 lakh dollars and 1 lakh dollars will be invested in the organization so it's also a way of increasing funds to for the organization so companies are not required to pay dividends some companies have high eps high earnings per share but reinvest all money back into the companies so how we calculate the dividend payout ratio dividends per share divided by earnings per share so it will show the dividend payout ratio clear three reasons to love dividend most of the people love dividend for the purpose for the three reasons first stocks that pay dividend tend to produce higher return than those that do not pay if we look to the s&p s&p is a rating company in the us so dividend payers were up to 6.5% versus 3.6% for non dividend payers if we look as s&p shows that s&p is a rating company it shows that dividend payers are growing up by 6.5% but the organization which are not dividend payers will are growing by 3.6% so there is a difference between the growing of the dividend payers and non dividend payers since 1928 if we look to the 1928 so dividends have accounted for 40% of total return on stock so every company if every company is not going to pay the dividends to the investors so there will not be any income in the stock market or in the equity market so since 1928 there 40% of total return of the stock market Since 1980, dividend payers have averaged annualized return of 15.5 percent, is related to the 12.8 percent for non-payers. The organizations which are not paying dividends, so they are annualized 12.8 percent. But the organizations which are paying dividend to the investors, they are capitalized. They are annualized by 15.1 percent. so therefore these are three reasons why people why investors love dividend dividend is a positive effect on the equity market it will increase the prices of the common stocks in the equity market if organization is paying dividend to the investors it has positive impact on the equity market other dividend characteristics are stock dividend payment of a dividend in the form of additional shares of stock it's called stock dividends dividend reinvestment plan drips plans were where, where cash dividends are automatically reinvested into additional shares of the firm's common stock so they are reinvested in the organization as a capital gain or 1000 companies offer drips they do not pay any kind of a dividend to the investors usually have no brokerage fees if there is reinvestment plan so if this reinvestment plan shows that there is no brokerage fees it means that broker is not involved in this if you get dividend so your dividend will be provided by the brokerage by the broker so broker will demand transaction cost for you from you so if there is no payment of dividend so there is no transaction card cost of the broker clear next types of stock there are multiple types of stocks the first type of stock is blue chip stock blue chip stock 
is a very strong stock financially strong stock high quality stock with long and stable record of earnings and dividends if any stock that is financially strong that is high quality stock and with stable record of the earnings and dividends so this type of stock is called blue chip stock the companies which are offering blue chip stocks they are leaders in their industry they are leaders in their industry relatively risk is lower than other other types of stocks to financial stability of the company risk is low because of the financial stability so we call these types of companies the leaders of their industry so if they are leaders of their industry so they are, they are financially stable if they are financially stable there is low risk popular with investing public looking for steady growth potential they have steady growth potential in the market steady potential means they are growing their dividend they are growing their stocks perhaps dividend income provide shelter during unsettled market if the market is bear market so this type of organizations provide shelter for the bear market these types of stocks are provided by the city group organization p fisher organizing dupont nike procter and gamble home depot these organizations offer blue chip stocks it means that city group p fisher dupont nike procter and gamble home depot they are leaders in their industry next type of stock is income stock stock with long and sustained record of paying higher than average dividends they are also good stocks same like the blue chip stocks sorry yeah blue chip chip stocks dividend tend to increase over time sorry goods for investors looking for relatively safe and high level of current income if the investor is looking for the relatively safe stocks and high income stock so they will go to the income stocks dividends tend to increase over time this dividend is growing over the time unlike interest payment on bond payment interest on bond is not growing some companies pay high dividend because they offer limited growth potential there is no growth so they offer high dividend to the organization they do not want to grow their dividend more subject to interest rate risk these types of stocks are more related to the interest rate risk if interest rate goes high then there will be loss there is there will be loss for the common stock holders because they will not grow their dividend dividend fix so this fixed dividend will tend to the interest rate risk these types income stock are offered by the bell south organization conagra foods ford motors bank of america and duke energy so dear students which organizations are exampled in today's lecture all, all most of these organizations are us based these organizations are us based so you are supposed to find out about these organizations in the google dear students if someone ask you that which organizations offer income stocks directly you can answer them that bell south conagra foods ford motors bank of america duke energy these organizations offer income stocks next growth stocks stocks that experience high rates of growth in operation and earnings these types of stocks before we studied in the you know, in income stock that they, these types of stocks are not growing there is no growth rate only dividend is paid to the to the investors but growth stocks are the stocks which experience high rate of growth in operations and earnings have sustained rate of growth in earnings above general market investors expect higher price appreciation due to increasing earnings so their prices of the stocks will be appreciated due to increasing in earning their earning is increasing so this increase will affect positively on the price of the common stocks riskier investment because price may fall they are riskier if earnings growth cannot be maintained by the organization if the growth earning of the organization is not maintained then the, the prices of the common stock will be depreciated lowered in the market so they are risky may include blue chip stocks as well as speculative stocks typically pay later or no dividend because they are growing because they are growing they are reinvesting in the capital gain 
so this reinvestment is growing of the dividend so this will not offer this type of uh, stocks will not offer any kind of dividend mostly no dividend these types of stocks are offered by the Medronic. next boston scientifics countrywide financial will point and genetics these are also us based organizations and these types of organization offer stock growth stocks growth stocks to the investors are in the market next types of types of stock is tech stocks from the name it denotes technological stocks stocks represent the technology sector of the market range from speculative stock of small companies that have never shown a profit to blue chip stock of large companies that are growth oriented technological stocks are also growth oriented they will not pay dividend to the investors potential for attractive returns these types of uh, these types of stocks are potential for attractive returns considerable risk and volatility there is low risk and volatility in the market of the technological stocks difficult to put value on due to rate or no earnings is they are no paying uh, go, no paying any kind of dividend to the investor so it's difficult to find out value of the common stock of the technological sector so examples are howlett packard php intel dell yahoo electronics art and etc all the technological sector offer technological stocks in the market Next is speculative stocks. Stocks that offer potential for substantial price appreciation. Speculative stocks are substantial for price appreciation. Their prices in the market will appreciate it, will go high, usually due to some special situation such as a new product. These types of organizations offer new products in the market. So these offering of new products will increase the prices of the stocks in the market. Companies lack sustained track, uh, track record of businesses and financial success. So these types of organizations are lack sustained. They are lack in the sustainability of the record of business and financial success. These types of organization will not be successful in financially. Earnings may be uncertain or high, unstable because they are not sustainable financial organizations. So they are earnings. Their earnings may be uncertain or highly unstable. Potential for substantial price appreciation. But their prices will be appreciated. They are speculative. Expected that their prices will, will go high. Stock price subject to wide swings up and down in value. There is very up and down in value in these types of stocks. Examples are Sirius Satellite Radio, DreamWorks, Animation and Liberty Media. These organizations are also US based. These organizations offer speculative stocks in the market. <coughs> Cyclical stocks. Stocks whose earnings and overall market performance are closely linked to the general state of the economy. If the economy goes high, so the stocks price appreciated with according with according to the stability of the economy of the country. For example, if the country's economy is going high by the business cycle, by the economic cycle, so it will affect positively on the cyclical, uh, cyclical stocks. Stocks price tend to move up and down with the business cycle. So business cycle shows the economic prosperity, economic stability in economic development in the economy. Tend to do well when economy is growing. Cyclical stocks are well when the economy is growing, especially in early stages of the economic recovery. If the economy is recovering on that time, the cyclical stocks are very profitable for the investors but tend to do poorly in slowing economy if the economy is slowing day by day so it it will be poorly dividend generating stocks best for investors willing to move in and out of the market as economy changes the investors who routinely enter to the market are out from the market this type of investors are keen to purchase and sell cyclical stocks so these stocks are offered by the capital pillar Lenor, Alcoa and Brunswick these are also US based organizations 
Next is defensive stocks, stocks that tend to hold their value and even do well when the economy starts to falter. When stocks, uh, stock, uh, the economy starts to go down, on that time, these types of stocks tend to hold their value even. When even economy is going down, but their value is still holded by the organization, so these type of stocks are called defensive stock. They defend in the market. They defend in the beer market. Stock prices remain stable or increases when general economy is slowing. Products are stable, uh, staples that people use in good times and bad times, such as electricity, beverages, foods and drugs. These types of organizations hold their stock prices in the market even there is a hmm, decline in the economy. Gold stocks are a form of defensive stocks. These sto stocks are gold, sorry, gold stocks are a form of defensive stocks. Gold stocks, any kind of uh, organizations which are doing in gold activities, so their stocks are uh, defensive stocks. Best for aggressive investors looking for parking place during slow economy. So the investors who are finding out the parking place in the uh, slow economy, so this is very good for them to invest in defensive stocks. Examples are Checkpoint System and WD40. These both organizations offer defensive stocks in the US market. Next, large cap stocks. Large companies with market capitalization over 4 to 5 million dollars. Their market capitalization is over to 4 to 5 billion dollars. They are large companies. Number of companies is smaller, but the number of companies. It means that these types of organizations are very low in quantity. Mostly for two or three organizations are large cap offering large cap stocks. But account for 80% to 90% of the total market value of all US equities. It means that these organizations offer more equities, more stocks, more shares of co common stocks in the market. Mostly from 80% to 90%. Bigger is not necessarily better. We better know that bigger is not necessarily better. Because they are bigger but they offer more most common stock in the organization. Means that they, they, there are a lot of honors of the these types of organizations tend to lag behind small cap and mid cap stocks but typically have less volatility example of walmart general motors and microsoft these are large organizations but their uh, outstanding common stocks are in the markets are almost of 80 to 90 percent next mid cap stocks medium sized companies with market capitalization between one and five uh, five billion provide opportunity for greater capital appreciation than large cap stocks. They are better than large cap stocks, but less price volatility than small cap stocks. Usually have long term track records for profit and stock valuation. They are baby blues, offer same class receipt for blue chip stocks except size. If you remember blue chip stocks, they were high quality stocks, they were high return stocks, stable financially stable stocks. So the mid cap stocks are same like the cross rexes of blue chip stocks, except size. Their, the size of mid cap stocks are very small, but the size means the quantity of the organizations of mid cap stocks are very low. Examples are the Barnes and Noble, William Sonoma, Reebok International. So these organizations offer mid cap stocks. The small cap stocks, small companies with market capitalization less than $1 billion, provide opportunity for above average returns or losses. Us and usually do not have a financial track record. These types of organizations have no financial track record. Earnings tend to grow in spurts and can have dramatic impact on stock price. Usually not widely traded, liquidity is an issue for these types of organizations. Examples are Playboy Enterprises, Denny's, Sanderson Forms, Build a Beer Workshop. These organizations are also US based organizations and these organizations offer small cap stocks and these are very low, low value stocks in the market. Thank you so much dear students. This was your today's lecture. I hope you got a lot of knowledge regarding the common stocks. Sorry for your today's lecture, which is very lengthy, the most lengthy. So the next will be your videos will be lower. For now, have a good time. Have a nice time. Thank you so much.